Hieronymus Jones and the Teacup Squid, a YA coming-of-age fantasy romance novel filled with magic, humour, and tentacles. Written and narrated by Michael Palmer Cryle. Chapter 2 Classes began with the eye-roll inducing math. The class was long, tedious, and mostly silent, for which Gertrude was supremely thankful. Miss Cooper had apparently grown bored of being indoors because she had decided that for the next hour or so before lunch they would hold the class outside. This caused no small amount of commotion amongst the students. Any chance to escape the classroom with its peeling paint and faint yet depressingly present smell of mildew was always well received. The class began the descent from the upper floor down to the school's small but neatly appointed garden. Along the way, Lucas Ballantyne, who strutted as if he owned the place, made a point of making a small pfft sound whenever he passed something that did not meet his approval. This included most things. Trailing closely behind Lucas were his two underlings, whose names would seldom matter to anyone who met them, and behind them Christelle, Shirell, and Norell. Hieronymus walked at the back of the class and calculated the odds of three such loathsome young women, all having mothers that thought names ending in L was a good idea. As he pondered, he watched Gertrude and he watched as the elves approached her. Hi, Gertrude, Christelle purred through a crocodile smile. H -h Hello. Gertrude did her very best impression of a confident smile, but came off looking like prey to these three jackals. So, like, who do you think will win? Christelle began. W win? Gertrude's confusion was clear, and the elves loved it. Out of Matt and Brian, like on quest for a date, like seriously. A perfectly sensible thing to have said in Christelle's tiny mind, but to Gertrude this was a very small step above gibberish. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I've met them. I don't really know what you mean. Are you being serious right now? Christelle stared at Gertrude with her mouth open, exaggerating her surprise and disbelief for comic effect. Matt and Brian are contestants on the TV show Quest for a Day. Don't you like live in the world? I like even watch TV. Hieronymus noted that television must make up perhaps 80 to 90% of Christelle's daily life, and felt mildly sorry for her and at the same time grateful that her television was keeping her away from the rest of the populace as much as it was. Sorry, I'm not allowed to watch television. I, I lead a kind of sheltered life. Gertrude ended her sentence with what she thought would be a small joke that would lighten an increasingly tense situation. Unfortunately, it did not. Are you being entirely serious right now? Christelle spoke slowly, emphasizing every word. Is, is that weird? Gertrude was genuinely curious, but afraid of the answer. No, that's not weird. You are weird. That is flat out bizarre. Why don't you watch TV? Christelle could scarcely wrap her mind around such an alien concept. The other elves standing beside Christelle clearly shared her opinion as they each had their lips curled and mouths open making a similar sound to air very slowly being let out of a balloon. My parents are strict. S sorry. Gertrude instinctively drew her hand to her upper arm. This gesture went unnoticed by the majority of the class, but not by Hieronymus. It was the second time she had made this gesture. The first was during her introduction. Hieronymus felt something tighten in his stomach. What did you even talk about with your friends at your last school? Your massive lack of fashion sense and love of ugly old overalls? Christelle puffed up with pride as her cruelty earned her the laughter of those behind her. First the elves, then the rest of the class. Lucas even chimed in with a nice, a rare compliment indeed. I I've never had any friends. I was homeschooled. Hieronymus knew as soon as those words left Gertrude's mouth, any hope she may have had for an enjoyable future at this school were well and truly over. At first, silence, deadly and toxic, and then the class laughed, long and hard. With every guffaw, Gertrude seemed to shrink a little more. Hieronymus just stared at the frightened new girl. She was so embarrassed but did not fully understand why. What she had said, it did not occur to her not to say it. It was the truth, and that was all there was to it. Hieronymus found this level of honesty to be, again, beguiling. He could see that the class was seconds away from beginning a feeding frenzy of teasing, so he lifted his head and stepped forward. All right, settle down. 
Miss Cooper put an end to the situation before Hieronymus could do or say anything. He was certain this was for the best. Hieronymus was not known for being good at social interactions. It was fair to say that he was off-putting and a know-it-all at best. He never saw the need to hide these flaws about himself. He simply didn't see the point. However, he was grateful he wasn't given the chance to make a bad situation worse. Who can tell me the correct name of this plant? Miss Cooper was a gardener to a truly psychotic degree, and may the gods have mercy on anyone who answered a gardening question incorrectly in her presence. This question had nothing to do with school. No upcoming exam would feature this question. This was simply an old woman enjoying herself more than she would teaching from a textbook. Hieronymus raised his hand. Mr. Jones, will you surprise us all and answer incorrectly for a change? The old teacher asked lightheartedly. The chances of Hieronymus Jones not knowing the answer to, well, anything, was very small indeed. Not today, Miss Cooper, he said with a genuine smile. He looked at the plant Miss Cooper pointed at. It had broad leaves and bright magenta flowers, thick and soft, that came together in a yellow centre. Common zinnia, or more correctly, zinnia elegans, from the family Asteraceae. Hieronymus had answered perfectly, and once again confirmed that he was an off-putting know-it-all, which didn't annoy the class as much as the fact that Hieronymus didn't care that they thought of him that way. Very good. And uh, what about this little one? Miss Cooper pointed to a smaller plant with stalks of vivid and delicate purple flowers. She was smiling warmly. Somebody different, I think. How about you, Gertrude? Oh. Miss Cooper hadn't meant to put the spotlight back on the poor girl. Her name was simply at the front of her mind, and she spoke without thinking. Miss Cooper wished desperately that she could take back Gertrude's name and say anybody else's. The child had been through so much already, and the day wasn't even half done. Blue Sage, I mean, Selvia Farnacea, from the family Lamacaea, Miss Cooper. Another perfect answer. This time from the new girl with the wild red hair and freckles. Miss Cooper thought to herself, please don't let there be two of them. Gertrude had presented her answer in the same format as Hieronymus had, mirroring him. Hieronymus studied her. Was she mocking him? Trying to score points off him to mitigate her earlier embarrassment? Hieronymus certainly would not have minded if she were. In fact, he greatly hoped that was the case. Gertrude was not mocking anybody. She simply gave the correct answer in a way she had assumed the teacher wanted the answer given. Nothing more. Hieronymus could tell a person's intentions by the evidence that leaked from their expressions. The way your eyes dart up and to the left, or the slight reddening of your nose as you spoke, could tell him more than you ever could with words. Hieronymus caught himself staring at Gertrude. He told himself he was just reading her intentions, but the truth was, he couldn't. She was the definition of a mystery to him, and still, he stared. Lucas Ballantyne, remove yourself from that flower bed! Miss Cooper was no longer smiling as she noticed Lucas casually crushing flowers she herself had planted. Hieronymus hadn't noticed until his attention was drawn to the scene, which was unusual for him. He had been distracted. Lucas wasn't trying to crush the flowers, he simply didn't care about them. That was his nature. At first, Hieronymus had thought the deplorable boy was standing on the flower bed so that he would be higher than everybody else in the class, and while that was true, it was not the reason. Hieronymus looked down and quietly said to himself in a slightly confused tone, His shoes? How peculiar... Gertrude cast her eyes down to the blonde boy's feet. She had moved close enough to Hieronymus to hear his mutter, but was confused as to why he had muttered it. No, thank you. Lucas spoke in a sweetly lyrical way that gave the impression that he was not scum. He was, though. Miss Cooper was gobsmacked by the rudeness of this boy. I said remove your... And I said no thank you. Lucas had cut off his teacher with an arrogant chuckle. He began to speak again. These shoes are worth more than you make in a month. The entire class looked at Lucas Ballantyne's shoes incredulously. I am not getting that filth on my new shoes, and I am sick of talking about this. Carry on with your little lesson. The filth, Lucas referred to, was the rich red volcanic soil that covered the island. That soil got pretty much everywhere and stained everything it touched. The locals joked that there was no such thing as white on the island, just shades of pink. The boy had chosen to crush a flower bed rather than allow that red soil to touch the soles of his feet. He apparently preferred the rich black potting mix that made up the flower beds to the rich red soil that made up the ground. 
Hieronymus found this to be absurd, and it was clear that Gertrude did too, because when Hieronymus turned his head, there was Gertrude, with a very puzzled look on her face. Bored now. I'm going to the bathroom, if it's perfectly all right with you. Lucas made a mocking attempt at a bow, laughed and walked off, sticking to the grass, careful not to stain his shoes, which were, after all, very expensive. Miss Cooper was furious, but then seemed to remember something and looked downward. She continued teaching her class and did not look in the direction of the defiantly trudging young Lucas again. His shoes, Gertrude whispered to herself. How peculiar. I hope you enjoyed today's chapter of Hieronymus Jones and the Teacup Squid. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so that you won't miss a single chapter. This book, as well as the other three volumes of the Hieronymus Jones series, is available from my website, www.voodoodelicious.com, as well as Amazon and iTunes. Thank you for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time.